what 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 Oh! I'm gonna cure some cancer, got lots of education. The nurses are helping, we're, we're treating. This is super awesome. Now I walk into the clinic like, what up? I'm the cancer doc. I'm so pumped to be here at the treatment shop. Eyes on the syringe, it's so dang long. People like, dang, that chemo's strong. Rolling up, vroom, vroom, headed to the chemo room. Dressing all pink, set my comfy shoes, those are cool. Draped in a heated blanket, buddy sitting next to me. Hey, how you doing? Can't let cancer get to me. Rockin' it, lovin' it, bout to go and get some coffee Triple tall cappuccino, what you know about me? Sitting in my office, medical journals around me Walk into the lobby, nothing but soaps on the TV What you know about rockin' a wig on your noggin? What you know about wearing a port all plugged in? I'm living, I'm living, surviving through Herceptin One person's struggle is another person's strength up Hold up, wait up, time to fill this verse up Has anybody seen my triple tall cappuccino cup? Thank you volunteer for the bone marrow yesterday Cause it's gonna help us save a life today I'm running, running, running every year at the relay. You can find me chilling with the OA. I'm gonna cure some cancer, got lots of education. The nurses are helping, we're, we're retreating. This is super awesome. I'm drinking my coffee, my hair's incredible. I'm in this white lab coat from the med shop down the road. I'm taking my chemo. I look incredible I'm sporting this sweet wig From the beauty shop down the road I wear these sexy scrubs I feel incredible My hair is natural From the barber down the road We just killed some cells Nasty, plenty of good ones left We, 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 we just killed some cancer This is super awesome <laughs> Lights out, cancer! So, welcome. I'm a dad, I'm a granddad. I worked in Nebraska for 20 years, and these are some of my Nebraska colleagues. We went to small towns to do cancer care, so we'd fly in little airplanes uh, every now and then to get to the towns and do our clinic. Um, and so I like coffee as well as you've seen. <laughs> um, I'm originally from here, so I was born actually in Seattle and grew up here in Bellevue. Uh, went to the University of Washington for my medical degree, Gonzaga for my undergrad. Um, then went on the journey of residency and fellowship and all that and practiced for a long time in Nebraska, now coming back here to practice and be closer to my family. Um, so what I want to do today is kind of talk a little bit about cancer now and kind of the scientific side of it as well as the human side of it. And when we talk about cancer, um, the good news is that we're doing pretty well with that nowadays. Uh, there's approximately 15 million cancer survivors in the U.S. now, so that's, uh, that's getting larger every year and that's really great. Um, the cancer death rates are going down, um, so that's good, and uh, we have a lot of new treatments available as well. I'm a medical oncologist, so I do the chemotherapy type treatments. Um, there's many other people involved in cancer care, as you're probably familiar with. Well, what is cancer? Well, cancer is basically um, unregulated cell growth. So our normal cells all of a sudden go haywire and start to grow too much. And we can't stop that. And then they spread. Um, and a lot of times that's through doing, having mutations in the DNA of the cancer, or of the normal cell that causes it to go into a cancerous mode. Um, what we're doing now is harnessing those changes and developing treatments for them. 
So we have the science side and then we have the human side. These are some of uh, my patients uh, in, that I had in Nebraska. And when someone's diagnosed with cancer and going through treatment, there's a lot of practical things that um, you, you need to think about and that the patients think about that aren't really related to their chemo or their surgery or radiation. Um, so we try to make that a good experience for our patients as much as we can. And so patients have a lot of practical questions when they're going through cancer treatment. Um, a lot of them is about what are the side effects going to be, uh, what's my prognosis, how is treatment going to impact my daily life, things like that. And uh, so we, ha we have to embody the whole person when we're having them go through treatment. And we've done some uh, educational videos. And one thing everybody always wonders about if they're getting chem chemotherapy treatment is whether they're going to lose their hair or not. And this is a nice video about kind of what patients thought about that. I did my first treatment, had a wedding that weekend, made sure I got a family picture, and then the next week I sat down for treatment and I had a white lab coat on and my daughter was sitting with me and I said, oh my word, this is just dirty. I am losing so much hair, this isn't even funny. And I said, call our hairdresser. I'm going to shave it off. I think my sister was more stressed out about it than I was. She's like, I'm scared. Why are you doing this? And so I just grabbed some hair. I'm like, this is why I'm doing this. And a big chunk fell out. And she's like, oh. When you're diagnosed with cancer, that's the first thing you think about is, great, I'm going to lose my hair. <laughs> When I thought about cancer, I thought about a wig, you know, and I was going to have one of these cute ones. I wasn't going to have a, a gray-haired one. I was going to have something that would lift me up. But uh, this doesn't, you don't lose your hair with, uh, evidently, with colon cancer. So I'm stuck with, with what I've got. It was coming out so much that um, one day I was outside and it was windy and I would just watch it just flying out of my head. And so I called a friend of mine and I said, would you come over and take some family pictures while I still have some hair on my head? And then I'm gonna cut it off. All my sisters, I have nine sisters. My sisters and I went to a salon and we all cut our hair. They all had long blonde hair too. So we all cut our hair and donated it to Locks of Love. Very tough, very hard to, um, to lose your hair. But every day, my husband said I was beautiful. The day that I lost my hair, I went to go get my hair cut. I'm like, well, I don't really need it cut. It's just falling out. You know, the blow dryer will just blow it in every direction. You'd run your hey, fingers my, through her hair. And it would just, like, all come out. And Paige, my daughter, one day was like, is it really? And she goes, look, Ma. And she, we were sitting on the stoop, and you were there. And she goes, and I just turned, and she had this clump of hair. And she goes, did you not feel that? Did that hurt? Did that hurt? I'm like, N no. How many times in the last three months have you shaved your legs? Uh, maybe twice. <laughs> <laughs> so there's, I guess that's a perk. It wasn't real until my hair fell out and I'm like, oh, I look like a cancer patient. But um, I've never really cared about what other people think about me anyways, so why care now? I had caps, I did surgical scrub hats, I did scarves, I couldn't wear any of it. So I was the bald person walking around. And then, you know, I had a hot head, so people would put cold cloths on my heads or cold hands. So it was, it was comical most of the time. 
I didn't really, I guess, pay attention to when it came back. I knew it was going to come back, and it came back, and one day, I guess, there it was. I was okay with it until I looked in the mirror, and I'm like, oh, I don't have any hair. But I look like G.I. Jane, and Demi Moore was gorgeous in that movie, so why not, you know? <laughs> so I just grasped it and went with it. So it's, it's good to talk and find out what our patients are experiencing and feeling, and a lot of those things they won't always ask the doctor. So the nurses and other staff in the office are very helpful for uh, working with that. At, in our program at Overlake, um, we have uh, wig uh, assistance and scarves and all kinds of things you can do now for hair loss. We have different ways to treat cancer. The traditional ones I have listed here, chemotherapy, surgery, radiation. And the new one that's quite popular now is immunotherapy. And there's been a lot of uh, talk in the news lately about uh, a gene-modified treatment for acute leukemia. Um, and that also uh, works with the immune system. So we're making a lot of progress uh, on our cancer treatments and the latest pillar of cancer treatment is trying to harness our own immune systems to treat the cancer. So in chemotherapy, um, surgery, radiation, um, those treatments are going right at the cancer. But in immunotherapy, we're adjusting our immune systems and then our immune system is treating the cancer. So the immunotherapy drug is not directly attacking the cancer. It's helping our immune system recognize that there's cancer present and then letting our own immune cells um, go to work and try to destroy those cancer cells. So it's a very exciting time in the cancer care field. Did you say it was just for leukemia? Uh, right now, there's only one. Well, there's immunotherapy drugs that are for many different cancers. Um, there's also the CAR-T uh, treatment that was just approved but that's just been approved just for one cancer. Um, so it's a little complicated, but, um, but there, there's a number of immunotherapy treatments for cancers now, especially lung cancer, um, kidney cancer. Um, so lots of uh, options coming along. Some of the other cancers, the, the studies are still trying to figure out just what's the best way to do that. So. Um, so this is a little video about our immune system and about some of the newer immunotherapies. Immunotherapy is a new groundbreaking cancer treatment for locally advanced and metastatic cancers. Our immune system, which consists of our blood cells, lymph system, and certain organs like the liver and spleen, keeps us healthy by fighting off infections. Cancer escapes our immune system by producing proteins that hide it. Because cancer is hidden, our immune system cannot find it to fight it. Normally, we would fight cancer with our immune system that makes antibodies against it like we would for a virus or bacterial infection. An important part of our immune system are cells called T lymphocytes. They help fight foreign proteins in our bodies such as viral and bacterial infections. They also help fight cancer. Scientists have studied how our immune system can fight cancer for many years, but we have not been successful until now. A number of therapeutic approaches are being studied to harness the immune system and control cancer from spreading. One important way includes stimulating T cells to find and destroy those hidden cancer cells. Immunotherapy should be continued for as long as there is clinical benefit and there is not serious side effects. Two of these drugs are Keytruda and Optivo. Sometimes they are used alone and at other times are used with additional cancer treatments. These drugs are being studied to fight many cancers including lung, kidney, melanoma skin cancer, bladder, ovary, head and neck cancers, lymphoma, stomach, breast cancer, and other cancers as well. Some aspects of immunotherapy are 
cancer could get worse before it gets better, so treatment should be continued to its full benefit. With immunotherapy treatment, the cancer might not go away, but can be controlled for a long time. Some common side effects of immunotherapy are feeling tired, pain in muscles, bones, and joints, decreased appetite, nausea, cough, constipation, shortness of breath, diarrhea, and rash. Unique side effects are inflammation of organs, such as the lung, intestine, kidney, liver, and brain. There can also be allergic reaction and problems of the thyroid gland. Immunotherapy should not be taken by a woman if she is pregnant. Immunotherapy is a breakthrough treatment for cancer. Between traditional chemotherapy, groundbreaking targeted therapy, and now immunotherapy, we are heading towards a cure for cancer. So we've talked about some of the science of cancer and cancer treatment just briefly. I wanted to take a few minutes to talk about the human side. What, what is it our patients are experiencing? And cancer can affect old and young, as we've seen. So here's a patient stories I thought might be good for you to see and kind of hear it from, you know, the non-doctor side of things. Because sometimes, as doctors, we, we forget about that. I had Hodgkin's lymphoma, I was having a cough. I mean, I was just coughing a lot, it wouldn't stop, you know. You know, it was, I mean, it probably started at the end of April, so I just thought it was allergies. I was 31, which, you know, being in the cancer ward and being the youngest guy there was a little weird. Um, the thing about Dr. Lemon is that he's, no matter what's going on, he's calm as a Hindu cow. I mean, you, he doesn't, doesn't get you scared, he just says, okay, this is what you have. This is what we're gonna do. He's very confident in it. We decided Dr. Lemon was the one that helped us in the hospital and you know, of course he always says, you know, you can go to whoever you want, you can get a second opinion, but the way Dr. Lemon is, he's very confident, he's very calm, he calms you down. He never, he never makes it seem like it's that big of a deal. Well, I got through it because my, my wife and kids and my family helped me get through it. I mean, you have your family. They, they're there to support you. They love you. They, they try to help you, but they're not going through it. You, you know, one of the things I, I've always said is when you're in that room getting chemotherapy, you're in a room full of people that all have one thing in common. And you talk about it, and it's, it's therapy. I mean, if people don't understand that, you know, I remember being in there my first time and being scared and people would joke and talk with me and you know they really really helped and then you do the same for the next person that comes in that's never done it before so those people in that room become really close to you in a short period of time because you get to talk. I've known my wife since I was in seventh grade. We met in junior high. She probably worked twice as hard while I was sick because I couldn't do, you know, she had to go to work. She had to take care of the kids. I mean, I could do stuff with the kids, but there's stuff you just, you know, you're not supposed to do or can't do. She took on a lot of everything until I was better. And, I mean, that's the one thing you gotta realize is you gotta make sure you say please and you gotta make sure you say thank you. You gotta make sure you know you care that you care and that you know she's they're doing a lot you can't just be like well I'm sick you know you're not the only one going through it there will be fights there will be bad times but there's good times too I mean you have to you have to realize it's the same person you still love or care for and that it's just a hard situation I'm cancer free um, we've moved to I mean, I think we moved every four months instead of every two, so it's it's progressing like it should. Nothing's come back. I mean, I'm still dealing with little things that you didn't have before cancer, you know, that you got to deal with now. But he told me it takes a while to get back to normal, and you might not ever be 
exactly the same, which is okay. You know, I'm still alive. You know, there's that. <laughs> Sometimes you'll be great. Your energy will be great. You'll build, you feel like you've built back up your energy and then all of a sudden you'll hit your wall. And you just gotta remember that that's part of it. No matter how far out you think you are and that, man, I should be better, you gotta remember that, you know, we poisoned my body for the better part of a year. <laughs> so, it's, it just takes time and people gotta remember that. Cause that's the most frustrating, like, you wanna go do something and your body still won't let you and you're like, well, why can't I do this? You just gotta be patient. I think it's always good for us to keep that in mind as providers that uh, our patients do have lives, they have families, they have other things that are important to them. So we, uh, we need to keep that into account when we're planning a treatment or talking about uh, prognosis and things like that. I'd like to just close by showing one last video. You've been very patient to watch these and I hope you've enjoyed them. But this is something called Carpool Karaoke. I don't know if you've ever seen James Corden do uh, his. So we thought, well, wouldn't that be fun? So there's a driver, there's a passenger who's uh, one of our patients, and then we have a singer in there. So I uh, hope you like it. How you doing, Mike? Good. Thanks for coming out with us today. Yeah, this looks like it'll be fun. A little car ride. Yeah. Maybe some we have Kiana right. here, hey Kiana. Yes. Kiana, yeah, thank Maybe you. Maybe some music? Sure. Oh, yeah. yeah. Some music? Can't yes. beat that. What song are we thinking? Well, uh, I'm thinking I'm thinking Wagon Wheel. Wagon Wheel? How's that wagon sound? Wheel. Sounds good. Okay. Okay. Well, let's do it then. The hitchhiking songs. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty. And now, now I'm, I'm your doctor, and right. you've been diagnosed with a cancer. Uh, tell us about that. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, last summer, about a year ago in August, I was uh, swimming and got kind of a sunburn, and hmm. uh, I was, uh, a couple weeks after I got back, I was applying lotion and to my uh, chest and noticed a lump on my right breast. Hmm. And uh, my brothers had had cancer, not this kind of cancer, but mm -hmm. I thought, well, I better uh, call my GP and get it checked out. And he kind of thought maybe it was a cyst, uh -huh. but uh, he thought we better better get it checked out anyway. So okay. it turned out to be uh, cancerous. So. Oh my. So a breast cancer. Breast cancer, a, that's and right. And a male, so male breast cancer, that's pretty It's pretty, pretty rare from pretty what rare. I understand. Yeah. So what was it like telling other people that you had a breast cancer, did they say, well, what'd you say? Or? Yeah, that's kind of interesting. Uh, one of the first uh, first uh, times I did that is uh, was to one of my classes at Creighton. And, uh, and now, now what do you teach again? I teach, uh, this class was a composition class. I also teach uh, creative writing and world literature, uh -huh. poetry, that kind of thing. Okay. And uh, so I announced to the class, they could tell my hair started falling out, things like that. Yeah. And they kind of knew something was up, and so I decided to tell them. Mm -hmm. And a couple of guys were, you could, I could see visibly, they were kind of shocked. Mm -hmm. You know, they, mm -hmm. they hadn't heard of that before. Yeah. And I kind of made a decision to tell people about it because I think men need to hear it. Yeah, absolutely. 
Yeah, and you also, know about that. I mean, get, I never heard of it. You can feel a lot, get that checked out, definitely. Right, yeah. right. Now that's good for your class to learn that in addition to the uh, the classics of literature or that's poetry. Right. Or... <laughs> right, a little, a little bit of drama right in front of them. Well, thank you very much. It's been a pleasure, and uh, thanks for having me.